So I have a bit of a rant to share today. I grew up thinking that I did not like history. I grew up feeling really, really, really bored in history classes, especially in primary school, um, secondary, the same though. And what's been interesting to me is like, when I started teaching, I started really enjoying unpacking things from a historical perspective, especially related to social injustice or institutional oppression. I found that like going back and understanding the history behind it was really, really interesting to me. And I'm, I'm watching a documentary right now uh, that is taking a sort of like historical perspective on a particular social justice issue. And I'm finding myself remembering why I was so bored. And it is a lot about how are we applying the lens of history and a lot of the issue I presently take that I think uh, is part of the roots of why I felt so bored about history, learning history growing up in this country, is because of where we start, because of where our history starts, because like Yes, this country came into existence at a certain point in history. And very often, that's as far back as, as our historical accounts of things go. Um, this documentary that I'm watching right now is about race and racism, went as far back as, you know, slavery and, and people being brought here against their will. It actually didn't talk about genocide committed against indigenous populations to this country, um, which is a whole other issue. So often we don't even go back as far as that, right? Like oftentimes when we're talking about history, when we're talking about um, the origins of social injustice, such as racism or sexism, often we don't even go as far as back, as far back as the, the genocide that was committed and the culture that was essentially extinguished here on this continent prior to people coming here. Even beyond that, what we miss is the socialization that was brought here, right? Like, it's not as though white Europeans just came here, wiped out the indigenous population, set up slave processes, and recreated a brand new society with a new culture. And, you know, it's not as though the culture that they instilled into the foundations of this country originated with them. It did not originate with them. They brought it over here, right? Like white settler colonizers brought that culture, brought those value systems, brought these ways of seeing other people to excuse the, Im immune, the, the inhuman actions that were being committed by them. Like how disconnected does someone have to be from their own humanity? To, to come in and engage in some of these historical acts that we know happened here. They came in with those perspectives. They didn't arrive here and decide to do it. They were indoctrinated with that centuries, thousands of years, like that indoctrination process had been happening for thousands of years beforehand. So the issue when we are looking at, especially an issue of social injustice, and we only take it as far back as you know, slavery processes that were used here in this country, when we only take it as far back as the constitution that was created in this country, which by the way, was based on agreements that were initiated here and instilled here by indigenous populations, but we don't go back that far, right? We only go back as like a bunch of old white guys got together, came up with these ideas, American culture, North American culture, US culture was birthed. So the problem with that is that we keep ourselves in that paradigm. We keep ourselves stuck in those paradigms when we don't see beyond them. When I'm watching a documentary that talks about wealth as an, an indicator of injustice, which yes, that's very true, but walks me through these policies and acts over time, starting from post-slavery to now and like here are all these legislative acts here are all these policies that were passed that oppressed people of color that you know hoarded wealth from one direction to another 
that is important for us to know and it also doesn't connect enough to the issue because the actual issue is that wealth was introduced as a power and control tactic. The reason we have wealth is to separate people who have from people who do not have. The only reason we have wealth is because we have created a society and a culture and a paradigm where people need to hoard what's theirs, where people need to hoard resources, e.g. land, which is what happened at the dawn of this country, in order to ensure that they're that they are protected, right? That they are protected from the others, from other people, from the government, government, whatever. The only reason we need wealth is because of that. So when we don't go back enough to understand, like, why did we even introduce wealth to begin with? We're missing a much broader understanding of history. When I was growing up and being taught all these specific dates of all these events that happened, like, what to do those matter when the bigger picture issue that was at play was something that has been rooted in society prior to the creation of the United States. Wealth was introduced as a tool of power and control prior to the creation of the United States. It was then brought here and then used as that weapon and did exactly what it was designed to do. And it continues to be used as a tool to, to take from some and give to others. And that's, you know, all these policies this documentary is covering is talking about how, you know, wealth as a tool was taken from some groups and given to others. <clears throat> there is space to learn that, but there's also a bigger context missing of like this is what wealth was designed to do. This is what capitalism was designed to do. This is what most of our systems were designed to do. So I've realized I feel really bored when history isn't contextualized in a way that actually makes sense. And it's just presented as though like, here's the state and here's this thing that happened. And it all seems kind of random. And I'm like, well, I don't even know, like, how do I decide, you know, wealth inequality is a different example, but like, how do I decide what was right and what was wrong? And, you know, some of these other issues or like, how do, what does it matter if this policy shifted five times over the course of two decades? What does it matter when this is a social issue that our, our, human, our human population, humanity as a whole, has been struggling with and grappling with for centuries, for hundreds of years, for centuries? Like, we need a broader understanding. We need context that helps tie in the experiences that we've seen in this country from a global and like accurately historical lens. We need history that goes back further than the, the start of this country, the creation of the United States, because we didn't create these concepts here. We didn't create these paradigms here. We didn't create these belief systems that we follow. We didn't create the idea of wealth. We didn't create the idea of gender. We didn't create the idea of race. All of these things were planted well before the start of this country. And unless we look at that context and like understand our unique individual U.S. history from the broader lens of that context, unless we can do that, we're going to stay stuck within our system. We're going to stay stuck within our tiny little bubble in a much broader global history, a collective hum human history. We're going to stay stuck. This is the epitome of trying to use the master's tools to dismantle the master's house. We have built this house and we need to see that we are in the house. We need to see beyond the house in order to dismantle the house. If we keep playing around passing wealth back and forth, or we keep playing around and, you know, asking people to be tolerant of like, let me explain the existence of this gender identity. Let me explain the existence of this gender identity. Let me explain the existence of this gender identity. Instead of recognizing our broader human history, which is gender diversity has always existed, gender diversity has been a part of the human experience, it's been documented dating back 4,000 years, 4,000 years of documentation of gender expansive, gender expansiveness, transgender identities, non-binary identities, queer identities. We need to not be talking about these issues in a vacuum. We need to not be thinking that it's only a U.S. issue. And maybe we don't consciously think that, but when we are looking at historical injustice, 
when we are when we are looking at trying to understand issues that have played out in this country and we're only looking from US Constitution onwards, we are missing a broader understanding. And that broader understanding is what's going to help us figure out what to do differently. So that is my rant for today. And something I am committed to continue working on in my own perspective is broadening and expanding beyond what the textbooks and what the documentaries and what the social media sources and what most of the information we receive tells us, which is within the lens of the system of oppression that we exist within. Um, I encourage all of us to dig, to think, to ask some of those bigger questions. The information is out there, it's just not being presented to us. Um, but we can learn, we can practice how to do it. We can start asking those questions ourselves. We can move out of this hamster wheel we've created of spinning around and around and around within the systems of oppression that were built into this country.